We'll talk more about shipping when we talk about crates, but definitely figure out in advance who's paying for the shipping. If it's close enough, you can drop it off. Otherwise, you'll need somebody to deliver it for you. You will be surprised at how often it's going to be worth it to drive it and drop it off yourself. Time is money, and yes, two or three days to drive your work to Nebraska might not seem like fun, but gee willikers is art shipping pricey. Another consideration is that some carriers don't want to deal with art, so you wouldn't be able to insure it, or you'd have to describe it creatively on the form. If you're planning to go to an opening and the gallery is willing to let you install at the last minute, you might consider terminal to terminal shipping. This would be where you pay a bus, a train, or an airplane to get it from one station to another, and then you pick it up and carry it the rest of the way to the gallery on your own. It's a little bit inconvenient, but it could be a lot cheaper. We'll talk about crates and shipping more in another module. Assuming that you have a say in how the work is being installed, you got to figure out whether you want to hang on center or do what's called salon style. Salon style is essentially where you fill all the space with your art, like wallpaper. It can go floor to ceiling or it can stay within a band. Salon style can be an interesting way to present a lot of small work, but it is likely that it would be read as one installation as opposed to individual pieces. Most of the time, you're going to hang on center. In the resources page, there's a video from the Otis School of Art that will explain how to hang on center. It's very clear, and you can follow those instructions, but do be aware of the fact that that lady puts marks all over her walls, much more than you need to, because every time you draw a line on the wall, that's something you've got to erase or paint over, or both, after you take the work down. Assume the gallery will not have enough hooks. Picture hangers seem to get used up pretty quickly. So if you're installing yourself, you probably need to bring your own. Try to use two hooks for each artwork so that it'll stay level. For 3D work, be aware of navigation space between the pieces. Assume that a very large, careless person is going to try to navigate between your pedestals. Three feet between pieces is a minimum and not a very safe one. If your work is especially fragile, do you need to secure the pedestal to the floor or secure the piece to the pedestal? United Manufacturing is a frame supply company mentioned in the framing video. They'll also be able to sell you a variety of brackets that you can use to secure artwork to a pedestal. If you've got the lights for it, you would prefer to have at least two lights cross beams for every 2D artwork and a minimum of three for 3D artwork but you're probably not gonna have that many. One workaround is to generally light the wall to avoid hot spots. If you've got a choice, you wanna use floods rather than spotlights to create an evenly illuminated space. Consider the lights before you hang any of the work. Look especially for noticeable changes in temperature. As different bulbs age, they can shift, often to green or pink colors. If you can't replace those, try to at least group them so that they're all on the same wall. After you make lots of art, get it to the show and hang it on the wall, you still gotta let people know about your show. Most galleries use digital announcements. They're cheaper and they can pack more information on them. If they're making physical postcards, find out if you can add names to the list. Be reasonable with this. You don't wanna give them 200 names of people all over the country who are never gonna come and see the show. That's what your own email announcement will be for. But if you've got patrons who would be interested in your show, most galleries are happy to add your names to their mailing list. If they aren't planning on creating an announcement, get their permission to design your own. You have to ask, especially if you're gonna be using their logo or contact information. You can also decide to create posters or flyers that you put up around town. We'll talk more about developing your contact list in the audience module, and we'll describe writing a press release in the promotion module. Have a quick chat with the gallery to see what kinds of promotion they're doing, and then you can supplement with your own effort. Let's say you're doing your capstone show, and therefore you're responsible not only for making all the art, getting it on the walls, and letting everybody know about it, but you're also responsible for the reception. Most artists' receptions are openings but you might choose to have a closing reception, or if there's some other cultural event happening near your gallery, you might choose a date that matches up with that. 
If the city you're showing in has a first Friday or a final Friday or a third Thursday or a whatever it is they do, or if there are nearby galleries or theater spaces that are having events, you can time your reception to benefit from the increased traffic. Most of you have probably been to an art opening and know that you might provide finger food. Something easy and pretty clean. Don't set out a lasagna. People will get it everywhere, including on your art. If you want to have alcohol at your reception, that's fine if you're a page. But if your show is out of town, make sure that you're following all the local regulations. Some municipalities require that you get a temporary liquor license, even if you're just giving away plastic cups of cheap wine. Speaking of cheap, try to get as much donated as you can. In-kind donations are when a business provides you with services or materials for free. Even if they're not going to give it to you for free, if you talk to the people at the local liquor store, they're probably willing to cut you a deal if they know that you're buying multiple bottles to give away at a reception for you as a poor, starving artist. Also mention that you're still a student, and they'll be even more sympathetic. They might sell you something passable and cheap, especially if you don't particularly care about brand, or variety. When you're at your opening reception, don't get drunk. It seems like something that should go without saying, but let's think about your capstone show. Chances are pretty high that you will be making work up until the last possible second, which means that on the night of the reception, you will have not slept the entire week before, and you probably haven't eaten either. So that one sip of wine might be enough to make you stupid. Get your rest, plan ahead, and also stick to water. You can drink the leftover wine after everybody else goes home. You think I'm being no fun, but I've actually seen an artist miss out on a sale because he was so drunk that he was hitting on the potential collector's wife. Then again, maybe the collector is the wife, and that helps with the sale. Just because you got the work up and you had your reception doesn't mean you're done. You will need to deinstall the work. Always fill the hole on the wall. Ask the gallery if you need to repaint. If you're repairing the wall, spackle with a finger, not a hose. It's often more work to try to fix overzealous spackling than it is to just paint over the hole. If you're not physically deinstalling, make sure that you have packing instructions. Just like you did when you created the installation instructions, take photographs of you deinstalling the work safely and putting it back in whatever shipping container you're using. That way, the chances of a piece getting broken are reduced. Not eliminated, but reduced.